So I heard a song the other day that objectified women in every way. We call them love ballads and sonnets and odes, and if that freaks you out, you won't like this episode. That doesn't narrow it down much, but it was pretty depraved. The feminists are probably still rolling in their graves. They would, my young fawn, but alas, they're not dead. They can't die, they're zombies, they roll in the flower bed. See it. Reduce people to parts, objects to be acquired, turn hearts and minds into mere things to be desired and... Message received. You don't want your mind to be something inspiring delight or desire. Since men don't sing about female life forces, they'll just as happily fuck bits of corpses. As parts of my body were assessed and sized, I thought, what a way to be dehumanized and... Unless the body in question's reptilian, that's not dehumanized, by definition. These artists seem to be playing a game of how many times they can call us the wrong name. They don't know your name, so they're making it up. You're playing a game called HELP MY LIFE SUCKS! Cause I'm not a dime, those come a dozen. No, I'm really not interested in all your loving. <laughs> it's a bloody good thing they're not talking to you, which explains why they don't know your name, Peggy Sue. I'm not your shorty, your hoe, your trick. Your baby, lady, girl, or chick. Then gangster rap isn't the genre for you. Well, fuck me up the lump. Who knew? I mean, can someone explain to me how this counts as music when you chant, you pant about windows and walls? If you're not gonna bother, then neither am I. That wasn't a rhyme. No bed. Talk about a woman like she's a thing to be mauled. Oh, she's got a big booty, so you call her a big booty? If she had a big brain, would you call her at all? I don't care about booties, I don't care about brains. Just sort out your rhyme scheme. That's fucking lame. But it seems like I'm the only one appalled. That music can make me feel so small. Yes, it will still never cease to amaze you. Us telepaths can't see the thoughts that enrage you. But sorry, my dear, yes, nobody cares about the neurosis you're choosing to bear. You just whine in, ow! Just whine in, ow! Whine in, ow! Just whine in! You may think they're just words. That doesn't give them immunity. Words start wars and break spirits. They're still used with impunity. Words like bitch and whore do not start wars. What does start wars? Why, bitches and whores! The words in our classrooms, the words in our courts, words ending in ism, like yours. Just imagine a young girl, smart, funny, well-rounded, walks into a club and finds herself surrounded by men acting like they've got something to collect. They're just listening to the words that tell them that she's an object. No one has called you an object, my dear. If you were unconscious, they wouldn't come near. The thing they are trying to collect is your fancy in your chosen medium, interpretive dancing. Choose to express yourself musically, you'll tend to be judged by your sonic capacity. Choose to express yourself physically, you'll tend to be judged rather bodily. Your bodies are objects. Deal with it, please. Quit swanning around like ethereal deities. You're mammals, not hologrammatical tropes, saying, help me, Obi-Wan, you're my only hope. And her objections catch in her throat as she gets harassed unchecked, treated with disrespect, she's caught in the middle. And the lady doth protest too little. A few words have made her think she's brittle. Was it the word shorty that fucked with your head? And the African kaffir songbooks you read? Or might it have been the word objectified and rape culture? and gender apartheid. Might female insecurity have anything to do with the cynical bullshit from people like you? Do you see where I'm going? It's not exactly a riddle. I'm saying, can we turn up the volume, but turn down the noise? Stop polluting the minds of our men and our boys? I'll stop you there, Madia Bhatti. You do not get to speak for my brothers or me. Just because your brain is shut down by syllables doesn't mean others are just as instillable. We can hear lyrics and then comprehend the theatrical instinct to joke and pretend. Because we are taught to get on with our shit. We have shit to get on with, if you can imagine it! With all the rude misogyny and bland homogeny of rhymes and beats so crude and obsolete. Young lady, I don't mean to be rude, but if anyone chats obsolete, it be you. Because our ears are bleeding from all these cowards. The time is ours. We are ready to devour lyrics that make us feel empowered. Is that what you're doing? Empowering women? by telling them being too sexy is sinning. And every time men sing of how much they love you, they actually hate you and think they're above you. You are the voice of a social disease, of a totalitarian hypocrisy, projecting fake problems on innocent targets. You're not empowering anyone, you harlot. I'll, I'll skip through your bit about Beyonce, your girl. 
the richest, most powerful victim in the world. Because aside from the content, the camera just blew, and you didn't think to supply a take too. And now for the climax, let's switch up the tracks, from rhyming couplets to quadruple stacks. So I heard a song that caused me pain. Try dropping the bass out and tweaking the gain. The words were bordering inhumane. Stop listening to lizards then. Are you insane? Because I'm not accustomed to boys yelling at me. And I'm not accustomed to celibacy. Never had to face boys telling me. You've never even faced a spelling bee. Yeah, smack that, shake that, beat that up. A bit like you do with a bottle of ketchup. Those aren't the ideas of love with which I grew up. Really, Miss Headscarf? My, what a turn up. Maybe the whole concept is new to me. What? The concept of nudity? But then he started whispering what he'd do to me. I should hope you assess it with scrutiny. In a place where no one else could see. That's where sex happens, traditionally. Without even asking if I'd agree. Because he's a voice on an MP3. I really had to strain to hear. Problem solved. Don't strain. Won't hear. The words came fast and disappeared. Unlike those words that snag on your middle ear. They were drowned out by good music, I'm not gonna lie. Really? Well, you might not see eye to eye. Because good beats are the noise behind which singers hide- No, it's effort. Of the musical kind. As they beat a woman up inside. Well, you're pulling nothing short of mass femicide! It's easy to do once we've been dehumanized. Then stop it. Come back to Earth, Fluttershy! And the devil's greatest aid is my greatest frustration. Your greatest frustration? Death? Immolation? It's the most common appellation to sweep the nation. That means word for those two complacent. Rhymes with which, I'll leave it to your imagination. My imagination has nothing to prove. I have problems to solve and materials to move. If your biggest problems are mere appellations, your privilege is now really testing my patience. And you may think there's no correlation. What, between words and indoctrination? <sighs> But when a man loves a woman who won't love him back... Are we talking a stalker or regular Jack? What if his first instinct is to attack? Then he's an assailant, unless you're being abstract. He's got lyrics and blood pounding in his ears and... Both normal, both things are supposed to be here. A helpless woman faces her worst fears... What, a man with functioning ears? She's smacked, shaken, beaten, torn apart. Well, that escalated quickly. Let's restart. People who randomly flagellate strangers are psychopathically criminally dangerous. They are not spurred on by words or loops in background tracks they heard. They had childhoods that were broken. They don't care about lyrics spoken, not unless they're told that they should worship those words every day. <laughs> I.e. all those words a man can learn inside the good Quran. So do not equate battery to other cultures' poetry. Especially when yours is pretty dark. Against all odds, his bite's as bad as his bark. He causes the kind of pain that leaves a mark. And before he leaves, he turns to say his parting word. It's on the tip of his tongue, comes out unslurred. Might have been left unsaid if it had been left unheard. But it's been so programmed he doesn't twitch. His mouth fills with venom and he spits out, bitch. What can she do to ease her strife? Every song on the radio is a soundtrack to her life. Well, I'm glad I've not been a victim of violence, except for times when I have, but silence. But if I had been through a traumatic attack, I think I would be quite insulted by that. You just described a physical assault, striking out of the blue like a thunderbolt. You can detail such a vicious affront, but you still think the word bitch is worse? You cunt. On a dark desert highway, cool wind in my hair, warm smell of colleagues rising through the air. Ahead in the distance, I saw the shimmering light. My head grew heavy and my sight grew dim. Stop before the night. There she stood in the doorway. I heard the mission bell, and I was thinking to myself, this could be hell. Oh, this could be hell. And she lit up a candle. And she showed me the way. There were voices down the corridor. I thought I heard, I heard them say, Welcome to the hotel schizophrenia. It's such a lovely place. It's such a lovely place. In the room of the hotel schizophrenia. Any time of year, you can find it in here. Money, Tiffany, Twitch. She got the Mercedes Benz. She got a lot of pretty bodies that she calls her friends. How they dance in the corridor. Yard. Sweet summer sweat. Some dance to remember. Some dance to forget. So I called up the captain. Priest, bring me my wine. He said, We haven't had that spirit since 1969. Until those voices are calling me from far away. Wake up you in the middle of the night. Just to hear again say, Welcome to the hotel schizophrenia. Such a lovely place. Such a lovely place. 